Welcome to Expert Talks. I am Agathe Ducard. Today I am joined by Cal Scheiber, who will be giving us some perspective on the environmental aspect of ESG. Cal, thank you for joining us on the show. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Great. Let's dive right in then. So people are dying to know, what's the biggest challenge you see today for companies that have to manage environmental compliance? Yeah, well, companies are used to gathering data for environmental compliance reasons. And when you're measuring data for environmental compliance, you know exactly what data needs to be gathered because you have a permit or a regulation that's telling you exactly what to do. When you're tracking environmental performance, you don't have that luxury. You don't know what data needs to be captured. And so I think the biggest challenge then really is just understanding what data do I need? Uh, what data do I need to gather to actually measure environmental performance? And then what do I actually need to do from that point? So having that data in one place, uh, gathering that data and tracking that across the, the organization uh, so that I can compare it against the rest of my organization and then understanding what actions need to be taken are the, are the big challenges. Great, thanks Kyle. So we hear about calculating asset level emission, not just plant level ones. Can you explain what's the benefits of tracking carbon emission of individual assets? Yeah, so with environmental performance, we're trying to optimize our performance. We're trying to understand what actions do I need to take in order to improve environmental performance at my facilities. So. The more granular you're able to get with the data capture, the more specific and targeted you're able to get with the actions that you take to improve environmental performance. So if I'm only gathering data at a facility level, then I might be able to compare facilities across my organization. Uh, I might know which facilities are underperforming, but that doesn't really tell me what I need to do at each facility to improve performance. Uh, so if I do gather data at the asset level, I can understand which assets or processes need to be improved, and I can take those really specific actions on those individual assets. Interesting. Kyle, so companies can aim for compliance with environmental regulation, or they can aim to go beyond it. Can you explain how they can achieve a competitive edge by going beyond compliance? Yeah, definitely. So. The real new pressure that companies are facing is from stakeholders. It's from the public and it's from investors. Uh, so there's this risk right now of being seen as a laggard with, with respect to environmental performance. Uh, if I'm falling behind, if the public sees me as a threat to the environment, then uh, I can lose uh, value within my company, right? My share price can plummet. I lose investment money. Uh, but the flip side is there's an opportunity there for companies to instead be seen as a leader with respect to environmental performance. Uh, so the companies that are able to solve these challenges of data capture and which actions to take uh, most successfully, those companies actually have an opportunity to see a rise in share price, see the company valuation go up and be seen as a, a leader. And that is a competitive edge that did not exist before. So next I want to ask you, there are many sustainability standards or frameworks. How can software help to collect and track the data once and use it for multiple types of disclosure or reports without adding the complexity? Yeah, so when you're using software to gather all of this data, uh, you can actually accumulate one large comprehensive data set uh, that just tracks environmental performance across your whole organization. Uh, from there, that data can be manipulated, calculated, presented in whichever form to meet the obligations of different frameworks, uh, which is great because that means you don't have any duplication of data. Your, your data is consistent between frameworks. Um, and so you know that no matter who you're reporting to, they're getting the same measurements, they're getting the, the same data. So when stakeholders use ESG metrics to evaluate a company, what environmental factor do you think they're more likely to focus on? Obviously, greenhouse gas emissions are important, but can you tell us, is there any blind spots that companies should be aware of? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so stakeholders obviously want to see commitment and progress towards all kinds of environmental factors. Uh, you pointed out greenhouse gas, that one's probably the most visible just because of its importance with uh, climate commitment targets that companies are now taking. Uh, companies shouldn't forget about things like water usage, 
Uh, being responsible with water use, especially as we see uh, more news about droughts and, and fires across the world. Uh, waste production and recycling. Um, people want to know that the waste that you're producing is being disposed of responsibly. Um, and of course, uh, companies are also being held accountable for not just their own environmental performance, but the environmental performance of all their suppliers too. So uh, the environmental factors, uh, air, water, waste of all of their suppliers can't be forgotten about either. So that leads me to the next question. Why is it important to track school free emissions? What are the challenges you see and how do we overcome them? Yeah, well, scope three emissions can be several times larger than scope one or scope two emissions, depending on the, the industry or the company. Uh, so right there, the opportunity for improvement on environmental performance is, it can be much greater. Um, the challenges though, is that as difficult as it is to track environmental performance about uh, for one company, now you are dealing with the entire supply chain and that problem is, is multiplied across the entire uh, ecosystem of companies that is within this company's supply chain. Uh, and so you're dealing with challenges now of having consistent data between these different companies. Um, do I need to share data between different companies? Uh, how do I make sure that uh, the information that my suppliers are telling me is all consistent? Um, and how are these processes going to be standardized? And I think those are real challenges that are going to have to be solved over the next several years. Excellent. Thank you, Cal, and I think it was really insightful to look at the E of ESG. And thank you all for watching Expert Talks. Look out for more video and more insights on industry topics.